We've heard some great speeches tonight, but let's not forget that this is a political hit job. Democrats just know they can't beat President Trump in 2020. They can't beat the president on his merits. So they've taken uh, some thoughts and feelings and assumptions from some unelected bureaucrats and decided to impeach a duly elected president. But let's just take a step back and just assess where we are. We have two articles of impeachment against the president, abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. Let's just dissect each one. Let's start with abuse of power. Abuse of power is at this point just a vestige of quid pro quo. Remember, quid pro quo is what the Democrats were calling, calling this before they tested quid pro quo with focus groups and found out that bribery was a lot more compelling than an old Latin phrase. Now the Democrats have dropped bribery and they've accused the president of a very vague term, abuse of power. That's because the crime of bribery, quid pro quo, this for that, simply did not take place. Chairman Schiff and Chairman Nadler and their cohorts cannot make out what lawyers call a prima facie case. I was a district judge, and I'm telling you, I would have thrown this case out at the preliminary hearing level because it has no merit. There are no elements to support an underlying crime. The Democrats simply cannot make out, again, what we would call a prima facie case. This, this would be dismissed at a very early level in court. And remember, President Zelensky has repeatedly said there was no pressure. The call transcript, the primary evidence we have, not rumors and conjecture of bureaucrats, the actual document shows there was no link, linkage whatsoever between aid and the investigation. The Ukrainians were not even aware that aid was on hold when the president spoke. And Ukraine ultimately never had an investigation, yet they received lethal aid, javelin missiles. So simply put, there was no quid pro quo. If the Democrats really want to charge somebody with abuse of power, they should look no further than Chairman Schiff. The chairman used his subpoena power to subpoena individual phone records, then went through those records, singled out Devin Nunez in an attempt to smear a ranking member. That's the abuse of power. You want to talk about more abuse? How about dropping 8,000 pages of documents on Judiciary Republicans less than 48 hours before our last hearing. That's an, abuse of, that's an abuse of power. If this were a court of law, Chairman Schiff right now would be facing sanctions and would be defending his law license. Let's talk about obstruction briefly. Let's deconstruct that. Our government, remember, has three branches of government. And when there's a disagreement between the executive branch and the legislative branch, that's when the courts step in to resolve this. And that's what happened when Republicans had an issue with President Obama during Fast and Furious. That issue went to the courts. But now Democrats refuse to go to the courts. And why? It's simple. Because it doesn't fit their political timeline to get this to the Senate before Christmas. The only obstruction here is that of the Democrat Party. Let's not forget that last week, Judiciary Democrats voted down my motion to subpoena the whistleblower on partisan lines. That was obstruction of Congress. Let's not forget that Chairman Nadler refuses to have Chairman Schiff testify here under oath. That is obstruction of Congress. And let's not forget that the other side still refuses to bring any fact witnesses before this committee. Again, that is obstruction of Congress. So in conclusion, do we have abuse of power? Yeah, Adam Schiff. Do we have obstruction of Congress? Yeah, House Democrats. So let's call this for what it is, a political hit job.